uh, the typical software development process in any company, right? In any software company, right? Once you have the requirements, either from the customer or from your product team, right? When you actually start developing that, right? These are some of the things that you would go through. Of course, obviously, you do the initial design. You will pick a technology, right? Uh, depending on your uh, on the design and the requirements, right? And the first thing that you would look at is what are the existing libraries that are there, which can fill the gaps, which can provide some of the functionalities that I'm already looking at, right? I'll give you a very simple example, right? Suppose you need a date picker, right, on your website to choose a, a start date and an end date, right? You wouldn't start designing how to implement that. Instead, what you would do is we'll start looking at, is there any control that is already available, right? Is there any component, right, that I can use in my software and then make my software development much quicker, right? So this is something that everyone does. And uh, the, of course, obviously that's the way to go. Uh, however, only thing is that you have to be a little bit careful over there. And then, you know, uh, you'll start doing the development, right? There will be developers assigned, uh, various different, you know, parts of the, the development tasks, right? And then what a developer does, right? He starts writing code for the design that is given to him, right? And here is again, you know, things to, you know that can go wrong over here. I'll cover it in the next slide. And then once he develops the code, compiles, does the unit testing, check in, you have your CI CD process, DevOps process, right? And then you would do your, I mean, your QA team would come in. It will conduct all the penetration tests, system tests, performance tests, et cetera, et cetera. Right? When all the issues are uh, fixed, we'll do a final release. And this is a typical development process that anyone would follow in their software companies. Now, it kind of looks like this is perfect, right? Nothing can go wrong in here. Right? And in spite of it, what we see in the industry and what we saw at Vitrana also was that the quality of the product that came out of this process right, was not meeting the expectations. It had a lot of issues. Right? And it was not compliant right? by where things went wrong. So let's take a look at that. Where can it go wrong? All right. So one thing is your external libraries. Of course, we did, uh, you know, uh, spend some time looking at Googling and then finding out, okay, this particular library has whatever functionality that I want, right? So I'll go ahead and pick that. But as a development, uh, you know, uh, as a developer, did I go ahead and look at what are the licenses associated with this component? Right? Is it free to use? Is it paid? Right? Or are there other terms and conditions which will you know make me uh, you know, force me to kind of open up my source code? Right? So we generally as developers, we don't look at that. We all, I mean, all we are interested in is to see whether my functionality that I wanted is there in that particular component or not. Right? Where can I click on it and then download it and use it in my software? That's all we'll be worried about. This is one of the reasons why you know we run into issues, right? And then you know even if uh, if someone kind of uh, you know downloads that license thing, it is you know you cannot really interpret that. And there are multiple interpretations of all these different licenses. As Greg mentioned, there are some three hundred and fifty plus types of licenses. Right? And obviously, all these licenses come with one or the other, you know, thing wherein you know it will be a liability on you. Right now, um, there are a couple of things like you know compatibility among the different libraries, and there could be known security vulnerabilities within those components. Right. So these are some things that the developers don't worry about, and that is the reason why things go wrong. Right now, uh, other than the third party components, right, during the development, developers also, you know, try to use code snippets. They just do go Googling, 
and you know they see a piece of code a piece of function either in you know your stack overflow or whatever it is right there would be a lot of code available over there you do copy paste in your code and then you know you get your development task completed within time right now again we neither developer we don't look at whether there were any license issues with that is that code copyable or not right and we don't even you know when we copy the code we don't even give credit to the original creator we don't say where we downloaded it from and who was the original author right and then there could be known vulnerabilities in that and uh, known vulnerabilities are really an issue we'll talk about that a little bit later all right and another place where things can go wrong is you know the lack of capability among the developers or probably the lack of discipline wherein you know they would introduce security vulnerabilities while writing code and the code could be you know a bad performing code wherein you know it, it may not be written in the best possible way 